Hey everyone, how y'all doing? Hopefully you can hear me. All the meters say it's working, so I'm gonna trust that you can. <laughs> if you let me know, I appreciate it. Sweet. Okay. We had down and dirty show today. Uh, for SEO this week is episode 183. I just came back from a break, uh, went up north, checked out the uh, Grand Canyon. My wife, it's her birthday. It was her birthday on uh, Friday. So I took her up to Grand Canyon. She'd never seen the Grand Canyon before. So I thought that would be a good uh, birthday trip. So we did that. Uh, it was fun and I enjoyed it a lot. And hopefully she did too. Got some pictures and stuff and I should be able to show those off um, pretty soon. I'm going to clean them up through Lightroom and stuff just because, you know, that's how I do. Uh, as always, the chat is running. So if you uh, hear anything or have any questions, please let me know. Uh, we're going to uh, look at um, the stories. Um, I'm going to not show you my website because I updated Oxygen and it broke my theme. <laughs> so... Uh, Actually, yeah, uh, whatever. I'll show it to you. It'd be pretty interesting. Um, and the only reason we're doing this is because um, I don't have the, uh, I don't have a topic. I mean, what are we going to talk about, right? So, <laughs> uh, so the stories to talk about is the uh, how to improve core web vitals. Is actually a, it's a pretty decent post. You guys, I think I've you've been around long enough to uh, know my opinion on uh, core web vitals and. Uh, whether we should be dropping everything and, and switching to that. And uh, I, I certainly think that the answer to that is no. Uh, but this post just talks about how some things that you can do to improve your, your website standing in that testing tool. Uh, keep in mind, it's written from the perspective of someone who actually hard codes their, their websites. They don't use the CMS. Uh, so you can look at the, the website that this article is posted on. It's, an, it's entirely hard-coded. Uh, it's not a CMS website, so you have access to more things, and you can fix more things than you could if you were using a WordPress platform or something like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're not all developers. So, uh, you know, it's it's kind of, you know, you get uh, the ease of use, and, and you don't pass a lot of this testing uh, from Google, but um, when you look at a lot of the websites that are ranking in Google, uh, you know, when they score a 14 in core web vitals, clearly, obviously, it's not really all that much of a, a point of interest right now, right? Um, so, uh, webpagetest.org is still still my primary, but again, this is a really good write-up, uh, and if you're doing some hard coding, then I would go ahead and try it out. Next is this uh, Stream Suggest app. Uh, this is a it's a web based application. It's actually pretty decent. Uh, what you do is you just kind of drop your keyword in there, say tell it what search engine you want it to. You can go Google or Bing, and it will spit out a list of keywords from the auto suggest tools in both of those search engines. Um, I thought that was that was kind of handy to have, especially if you're doing a lot of keyword research stuff. You can uh, approach it uh, from that perspective and using the keyword research to, to nail those out. So I would check out uh, that tool. Uh, next is a post on how to verify uh, and test robots TXT via Python. Uh, this is really a, on the uh, technical SEO side. Uh, and if you are having a um, an issue with, uh, what do you think, um, I don't know, like uh, indexing issues and stuff like that. And maybe it happens to be uh, something related to your um, your robots TXT. You just don't know, right? So um, the the options right now are you putting a URL to URL um, per URL one at a time into like a Google testing uh, tool, or you can use Python to do it and kind of in bulk. And um, as uh, as always, um, I'm a, I'm. Big on Python, I'm learning it uh, myself, but I'm obviously not a master of it or else I'd be showing more of this stuff myself. But um, I think you you will appreciate the, the technicality of the write-up and how to kind of get through this process, especially if you are uh, considering yourself a, um, a technical SEO, as it were, right? Uh, and uh, I kind of enjoy that a lot. And then the final final post, and probably where we're going to go into the 
teaching part of this is a, is an article on the topic clusters and how to use those to um, how how this person used a topic cluster to boost his website uh, by a thousand percent based off of the, based off of the numbers that he showed. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this one. Uh, Samuel Schmidt is actually he's a really smart dude, and he, he's got some cool tools in here. And I shared this tool through through T H R U U U, and you can mess around with that before. And he writes some really good posts. So. Uh, and, um, I know that there are a lot of people that talk about content hubs or topic clusters or web silos. And at the end of the day, a silo is a topic cluster. A topic cluster is a content hub. They're all the same thing. Uh, and it's really just about how you format them. And the, and Sam, what he did was actually took a, a long form piece of content and busted it out and turned it into a, um, a content hub silo structure, uh, which ultimately exposed his website to more traffic uh, because those smaller posts now that were part of the original post are actually ranking better than they were when they were part of that entire thing. So I guess if you're looking for an argument as to why you wouldn't want to do um, long form content, this might be uh, a good one. Like, so um, kind of think of that about it that way. And, and the uh, the cool thing here is kind of just like his write up and how he did it, how he busted it out and how he turned it into um, something interesting for his uh, for his readers. And, I, and uh, I think that we can all learn something out of it. And basically, if you look at this, what is a topic cluster? What is a content hub? What is a silo? It's all pretty much looks like this, right? Uh, you can obviously play with the arrows, put them in your own way. You can be fancy and rename it reverse silo. You can, be, you know, call it a content hub like they do in Yoast or uh, Brian Dean calls them content hubs. Or you can just do what the uh, e-commerce people are and, hey, it's my category page, right? <laughs> uh, and And so... The the idea is basically uh, setting up and interlinking, and essentially what you have is a category page. In this case, he calls it his pillar page. Call it whatever the hell you want. It's a category page uh, when you're using it in a um, in a WordPress, for example. And you put your main topic in there, and then you have these supporting topics that go along, and then you do all the interlinking and stuff. Not all the fancy arrows and stuff. Really, at, at the end of the day, interlinking because they're all tied together and then linking to this pillar page as thus they all eventually start supporting each other. I do the same thing with location pages. I've been doing this for probably two years now uh, in local SEO and ranking like gangbusters where this pillar page that you see right here is actually going to is um, my uh, locations page. I'm going to zoom that in so you guys can see this a little bit better. Um, and so that locations page has the list of all my locations. In this case, we'll pretend there's four, right? And then it links down to all four of these. And each one of these locations, this location and this location, this location, all link. So this one will link to all three of these. And this one will link to all three of these. This one will link to all three of these. And this one links to all three of these. And then they can link up if you want to. Typically in this setup, I don't link up because I'm not using this page or this category page or this pillar page or content hub, whatever the hell you want to call it as a money page. Um, but I do send all my links to this page, right? And what that does is all that link juice flows down and flows into the, all of these evenly. It boosts these all up. And I typically need less backlinks when I do this process. And that's the same thing that Sam here saw when he actually conducted his tests. Uh, and I think that it's really... You know, us as SEOs, we kind of, I think that's why we have so much uh, of a problem explaining stuff to our clients, because we try to get cute. And we try to rename things. And if you look at the diagrams, it's a silo. Is that, uh, do any of you guys disagree with me that it's, that it's a silo? I think it's a silo, right? Yeah, I think it's a silo. And I guess Connor's question, do you use prominent locations, spread out ones, or a mix? I use all my locations. 
If a business has 10 locations, then I'll put 10 locations on a locations page. If a business has, I don't know, you're talking like a franchise that has a thousand locations, then your location, you have Arizona locations page, Nevada locations page, Utah locations page, Colorado locations page, and do it like that. Be a little bit more strategic about it. But for the most part, you know, most businesses don't have that. They're dealing with four to six locations in a city. Um, and you just have a locations page and it's, don't overthink this. It's not that complicated. I think when you talk about it, you start changing names, topic clusters, silos, content hubs. That's when people, it starts getting complicated and you're just talking about the same thing. It's like guest posting. Guest posting is article marketing. You're just doing it on other people's article or other people's sites, right? Um, that's, it's kind of the, the same, same part about that. Uh, supporting pages for the location page. That's one location each. So each supporting page, let me show this again. Boom. This is the location page. This is place one, location one, location two, location three, location four. There's one page for each location. And that's how you're going to set it up anyway. If you're Phoenix, this is your roofing. This is your Arizona roofing company. You have a Phoenix roofing punk page because you are going after they have that address in Phoenix. You have one in uh, Scottsdale, Scottsdale roofing, one in Glendale, Glendale roofing, and one in Mesa, Mesa roofing. And that's all that could, you could put that under Arizona if you wanted to, or uh, Phoenix metropolitan area. Uh, and which is uh, not inaccurate. And you, you kind of do the same thing if you want to, right? So there's one location, sub each one of these sub pages in this application, location page, all the locations, each location is on here. And then you have one page for each location. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, with your structure, are you hoping to rank the location page or is it a GMB for relevancy? Neither. It's for links, as I said. Because it's a location page. You know, I don't, I don't really care. It's a, it's my buffer. And I now, here's what happens. So, Britt, I link to this page. All my link juice is coming in here. It's all going here. The world's all happy. It's all going here, right? And then that link juice follows along and comes here and goes here. It's all happy. It's all wonderful. This page starts ranking because it's getting all the link juice that this page has. And then because this page is linking to this page, this one starts ranking. And because this page is linking to this page, this one starts ranking. And because this page is linking to this one, this one starts ranking. And because all four of those pages are linking back to this one, that juice is getting recycled. I'm not wasting it. And it's all going right back and doing it all over again. So I'm compounding the value of my links. So where a typical SEO will be getting links to this page, will come in here and get links to this page to rank this page. And... Uh, then they'll go and get links to this page to rank this page. And then they'll go to get links to this page to rank this page. And then they'll go to get links to this page to rank this page. So they're spending four times more than I would have to be just to get to send links here. You get what I'm saying? So I'm saving money and I'm being smarter about my linking and I'm using internal linking. So this is all exact match over here. This is exact match anchors. It is, exact, it is exactly the keyword that I want it to ring for. And thus these links have more power and it, I'm, I'm leveraging the internal linking structure and exact match to, to boost these pages up. And each one of these pages, this page that links to this page has an exact match keyword to that. Uh, it's pretty easy. I think I talked about this uh, when I built out, when I was rebuilding Digital Ear. Uh, I know I did it for my um, my case studies and stuff, but if you guys are following along, I've told you before that I'm you know, I'm using this to build my, my pages. This is it, an example right here. This is how I'm doing it. Look, Phoenix SEO, all of these are all linked to that, right? And then I have a location page. What do you think my location page is? Arizona SEO. 
That's my location page. All the stuff is here. All the links are going here. Now, obviously for Phoenix and a couple of these bigger ones, and I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna have to do a little bit more, right? I'm gonna have to build that out more. And that's the API, the stupid APIs. I'm not feeding that map. Scroll to see the map. I don't even care. People aren't gonna see it anyway. Uh so we go to Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona. There's all my relevant cities. And then there's my broken map. <laughs> all right, I gotta fix that. As I updated um oxygen as I started off and it screwed up my page. So screwed up my website. So I gotta look at all this stuff now. Anyway. So we look at all that and we see that this could be, this is all the link juice that's going to the Phoenix page, for example, is going to all of these pages. It's being passed along, right? It's just That's just how the internet works. And then uh, vice versa, anything that I would send the Mesa gets sent back to everything to you. I'm recycling that and I'm using it over and over and over again. Uh, and that's the view, the beauty of that. Uh, what is your structure for are you hoping to, yeah I get that um, and because it's on your site yeah and the duplicate content is not really an issue either it, uh, keep in mind this is a local website right so you can do more with uh, duplicated content in local and why can you do more with duplicated content in local and it's because Google is not stupid. They know that, um, like in an SEO services thing, right? I, I'm offering the same thing. I'm offering the same service to each uh, in each city. It's the same exact thing, and Google knows that. A plumber is offering the same exact service uh, when they're doing um, in, in a city, when they're doing... Um, I don't know, when they go from Phoenix to Mesa, they're still a plumber. They're still, you know, fixing your toilet. So they, they Google is programmed to understand that local businesses is kind of like that. So that's why you can kind of get away with, in your case, you're saying just changing the city name. It's a little bit more to that uh, in behind the scenes with the schema and stuff. But for the most part, yeah, I'm just changing the city name. Uh, and modifying the content and modifying the data on here to make it relevant for that city. And if you look at this tab here, it's highly relevant to the city, right? There's the zip codes for Mesa. Um, when this map works, uh, might as well do it while you guys are here. Uh, if I can remember. <laughs> Um, like the maps, the maps that add relevancy. So if I wanted to, I could put Mesa in there or uh, in, in my case, I actually have my GMB, uh, my Phoenix area GMB in all of my Arizona, Arizona um, pages. Um, but you can do right down to the locale. Like if we do uh, Bellevue SEO, this is one that I've shown you guys a lot uh, right here. I don't know why I did that because I don't, yeah, see, the map has, there's the city of Bellevue on, on there. Uh, and I think in here I have, yeah, I don't have anything. This is when I was just testing it out. Um, so I could leave, I could do this. And what have I've done is I've increased the relevancy of the, um, of the page, right? To Bellevue. Uh, and if you all have been following along on this one before, this one actually has content supporting it from a silo structure that is not in the content hub. Um, it's just the out of the silo. Uh, let me see if this one's back. I like doing this for stuff in front of you guys. No one's there. See the map is there. Uh, Mesa, Arizona. Okay, so it's it's there. Everyone can see it. They know what's going on. Let me update this. And let's see the front end. I probably have to clear all my browser cache. It's probably what's going on. That's what I broke.
There you go. It's all working. Yeah, I got to go through Cloudflare and clear all the caching and stuff. I think everything will come back to normal. Um, but there's all my relevance definitely for the city. Let's say I needed a little bit more help with this. I could do what I did with Bellevue. Um, let me see if these are ranking things to do in Bellevue. This was before. I don't think it is anymore. This is just the easier way to get to it. All right, so one, two, three, four. Yeah, four. I think that's all I got. Four silo pages. They're all optimized uh, for Bellevue. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, there we go. See? So I'm talking exact match keyword. Um, the images are optimized for alt tags. I, I strip all the excess data off of my website. Um, and then my silo is put together right here. And I have room. See, I've already done the research. So if I know if it wasn't good enough, I can write three more posts. Uh, and then... Um, all this stuff is, this is a custom dev map. So when, if you were searching on this page, it would actually, um, it would bring in different things. And so it kind of really depends on where you're at, but I have this map set. I believe this one set is things to do at Bellevue, Washington. So generally it shows up different, um, but it's, this is not a Google, my, um, a Google map maps.google.com. It's from developers.google.com. Uh, and then all the links can go to these pages. And um, if I generate traffic too, that makes this link even more valuable. But you see, it's still exact match. Okay. Um, how do you set up location pages when you have multiple services? Do you say roofing and home remodeling? Yeah. Um, you can link out. Typically what I do on the, in that case, Nathan, is uh, let, let's find a roofer. Um, roofing. Fix. Uh, this one. I've shown this guy's site before. He doesn't have a locations page. I don't believe... Yeah, you just got the two cities anyway. All right. So in his case, I'm looking. I could have swore you had one the last time I was over here. There was location page. Nope. Doesn't look like it. But you saw I was looking for Roofing Phoenix and it came up Roofing because that's what the page is optimized for. This is what that's what the business do. And then in your case, if you're doing ro roofing and home remodeling, really aren't you doing two distinct services, right? You're getting two different markets. Um, so in a locations page situation, I would almost, because it's two different, completely different things, um, I would almost say that they should make another website. You know what I mean? So roofing should have roofing repair, roof uh, replacement, roof installation, roof insulation, um, that kind of stuff. And then your home uh, remodeling because you got kitchen remodeling, bath remodeling, um, and all that other stuff. Um, it might even be better for a better for a, a whole new website. In that case, but if you if your client is tied to you, I have to do that. Then I would break it up just like he's got additional services uh, for each thing. Like you know, solar. Like some of the stuff you can see is clearly not roofing related, but solar goes on a roof. Maybe Google understands that. Who knows? Um, solar attic fans. Yeah, that's in the roof. So, uh, do you you have a the example you gave me, Nathan is is pretty shitty really right uh, it's it's not unheard of that a roofing company does also does home remodeling but a home remodeling company would also do roofing as part of the home remodel so 
it's in in your case in the in the location pages you can put them both together uh, but if you're offering two distinct services where uh, it, the home remodeling takes care of the kitchen, the bath, and all that other stuff, then you probably want a different website. Or you want a position for home remodeling who also does roofs. Uh, let's see. Uh, where are we at? If you would be offering more than one service, how do you link to those pages from your location page? Do you create a city word? No, I would actually create a service page. See, like they did. So they do tile roofs. Uh, and then my each of the location, my tile roof mesa, my mesa location and all that stuff would have on there that we do tile roofs. And then it would link to this. It would have on there that we do uh, shingled roofs or pitched roofs, flat roofs. And it would link to <clears throat> to these things <clears throat> versus outlining or making a new page for each service. It's because it, you're really at the end of the day, Google's, Google's going to show you show them their location page, right? There, um, this is Lloyd's Roofing. We're in Phoenix, and these are all the services <clears throat> that we offer. And if you want to know more about those individual services then you click around kind of like how we we found this this is roofing phoenix right and it's optimized really well uh for roofing in phoenix uh, but you don't see anything about location page in the way that we're talking about it right now um and making a new one for each you know in particular service, you know what I mean? So um, you can be a lot more smarter, smarter now and uh, not have to make, you know, Phoenix roofing, Phoenix uh, roof repair, Phoenix uh, roof installation, Phoenix, um, you know, home remodeling. You don't have to do all that stuff. <clears throat> uh, let's see. What anchor text do you use when link building to the main location page or individual pages? Um, what anchor text does the is Google looking for? Uh, you analyze the anchor text for the ranker pages like that that are ranking now. Uh, reverse engineer that for the top ten, and then come up with your anchor text ratios based off of what uh, Google wants in the search results. A good example of that is to go do a reverse analysis of the <clears throat> the web design space, city web design, uh, and you'll see um, exactly how that how Google is looking at that and how, how Google is um, leveraging anchor text uh, to rank those pages. Uh, let's see. Are you creating a location hub page for each service? No. No, just create it for your locations. You don't need that. On Digital Ear, I, I offer those the bespoke services, right? So I have web design, search engine optimization, and pay-per-click. That's my three main services that I offer to clients. Uh, and search engine optimization is obviously my primary. Uh, and I have pages for them right so what is seo uh blah 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 blah. but think about it am, am i realistically do i have i'm, I'm not probably not gonna have the money uh to rank for this anytime soon uh i'm not neil patel or brian dean so i'm not gonna get a whole bunch of natural backlinks from half of india um and uh so uh, the likelihood of me ranking for this term is not very much uh, but this page is here to establish that I know what I'm talking about. And I'm not completely full of crap, <laughs> right? And then my reviews and then my call to action is in there. Uh, and it keeps on going. And I keep asking again and again and again, request a, request a quote. A quote. Uh, but Google's not going to show this page in every city. Uh, it's just not going to do it for, for local. And so if even I... I would venture to say that if I left it at digitalairseo.com and an SEO and then put all my uh, locations on here, I still probably couldn't rank this page uh, for city SEO, Phoenix SEO, Mesa SEO, whatever. You just have to make one of these pages. And it 
to me, honestly, it kind of sucks because one, it's worked for us. And then two, it's, I don't know, are we really putting out our best content when we have to do that? Um, and I'm not sure that we really are. Uh, and that's, you know, I kind of blame, I blame Google for that too, because if you look at the, the search results, what are they showing? They're showing directories, right? Let's see. Mesa SEO. Uh, that's a search. That's a search directory company, company, directory, company, uh, company. And, um, I think those guys are, this is another one of those mass sites. They just do a whole bunch of shit. Uh, where's digital air? There's 15. It's not too bad. Um, and then some Google sites and stuff, right? But a plumber is even that those dudes even got it worse. Roofer Phoenix. Lions roofing directory, 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 directory. Uh, and then some real websites. And then the maps. And then the people also ask. And then the ads. And then this shit. Where it's just ads. So these guys are paying a little bit extra more money to have the little green thing. And then they pay even more money to actually show up in here. Um, this would, to me, would have been more valuable to a small business if it wasn't an ad. Like you got Google reviewed. And then they showed you the Google reviews. But. You know, Google's not dumb, they, so they monetized it. But all of these are all ads. So it's one, two, three, four, five ads. Then you get to the maps, and then you got to deal with this crap and Home Advisor and Angie's List, which are the same exact company. Uh, and then you got trashy Yelp in there, and then the Worthless Better Business Bureau. It's just like <laughs> it, the entire search result is designed to get you to buy ads. <laughs> that's what it's for, right? Uh, and so that's that's local. That's that's just the thing. So um, back to my point is uh, I can't make one web design page to rank for web design everywhere. I have to make those local uh, landing pages in order to peak interest and, and, and jing that up. The downside of that is really you're doing a whole lot of work, especially if you're doing this for your SEO agency for no damn reason whatsoever. Like you're going to get leads from... Like, I'll get leads from Mesa SEO. I'll get leads from Phoenix SEO. But for the most part, five, ten a week, if you're lucky. Because 99% of that traffic volume is us, search engines, as SEOs looking for that. Uh, and, and looking to see where our competition is at. That's where 99% of that traffic's from. Let's see. I can't justify. <clears throat> excuse me. I can't justify the work for ranking in local compared to GMB anymore. Uh, you kind of have to from from think about it. This perspective is the top three in, in the the map pack, right? And a full local marketing campaign should always include three things: paid ads. Google My Business, and Organic. And how they all work together is the Google My Business, provided that you're doing it properly, you're going to always have to compete with what? <clears throat> the, the lead gem maps. The lead gem maps that are primarily there and are being paid for primarily by Home Advisor and their parent company and their affiliate network and all of the other uh pay-per-call affiliate networks. Those are the people that are driving the GMB uh, spam, for the lack of a better term, the GMB lead gen maps, right? Uh, so that's going to take you a little bit unless you are have a forward-thinking business owner who decided that they wanted to name their company uh, Roofing Phoenix or Bill Bob's Phoenix Roofing, or, you know, you got lucky <laughs> uh, and had the, the the business name in there, then you got at least a fighting chance to jump in there because the number one ranking factor in maps is what? It's the business name. Uh, and then, so now you got that, there's the time that comes with the maps. Organic, on page, organic, you pretty much can get a page up into the top 15 with just on page SEO and real good schema in local. Because in local, the competition is thinking like Connor is. 
I can't justify the work and ranking for local anymore because because of GMB. Well, that just means that it's easier to rank because there's not a whole lot of people bothering with it, right? So 15, 25, just with on page is a, is a decent result for organic. And then now you have paid PPC. With paid PPC, you're doing three things. One, you're generating leads faster for your client or yourselves. Two, you are testing the um, the keywords that you were going to target with the maps or you're gonna, you were going to target with um, um, that you were going to target with organic SEO. You're testing them. One is traffic even there. Is it really there? And two, are are they going to convert into um, customers? Uh, and you can do your CRO at, with your PPC uh, at the same time. And you don't even have to spend a whole lot to get all this information. At the end of the day, really what you're looking for is the impressions. Um, and if it's just a brand new SEO campaign, you're going to get some leads for your client right off the bat uh, while you're building up that your SEO plan. And this can all be part of month one. Uh, you know, you're doing your your competition research, your site audit, your link audit, uh, and then you're setting up and doing your CRO analysis. You're doing your traffic analysis. That's all month one. And technically you haven't even done SEO yet. You just done that part. Um, and, and so <clears throat> when I, when I hear you say, I can't justify the work for ranking and local compared to GMB anymore, you, I think you're missing the um, the boat for a lot of free leads, uh, where you can transfer uh, your money and your effort into other new terms once you've captured that organic. Um, and, and I'll tell you, as a user, when I do local searches now, I usually end up on page two uh, because that's where the actual local businesses are. And I only do map stuff when I'm talking about an emergency, um, because it's there. It's it's an emergency. I need it right now. Um, so I'm not discounting maps. I think they work. They work incredibly well. Uh, you just have to be ready to uh, deal with <laughs> the issue that is maps, right? So um, I think some people have already noted <clears throat> on top of myself that. Uh, you can't even edit anything with uh, your maps getting closed down. And if you're only depending on maps for traffic and they shut down your maps because you, like in my instance, I updated the services on my on my GMBs um, to reflect the new offerings that I have, and they suspended my maps. Lost all my reviews, suspended my maps because I was a fake business, because I violated terms and conditions. And it took two reconsideration requests to get that back, just for editing that one thing. Uh, and if that can happen to you at any time, and there's no guarantee you're getting it back, and you just invested three, four, five, ten, fifteen, fifty thousand dollars $10,000, $50,000 into your maps marketing, and that's what you're living off of, how are you going to respond to your client? when you tell them that Google killed it. Uh, let's see. Are you using paid traffic when you publish pages or tweaking them? I've, I've seen that, and I've heard a lot of people talking about that, and it's actually kind of smart. Um, provided it comes from the right place, right? <clears throat> so I think you might actually see... Uh, a lot better benefit doing it from a, like a Facebook and that because I tried it with some of my SEO pages uh, way back and I was ranking on page one for Seattle SEO, for example. Uh, and I ran some PPC to that page. And as soon as I stopped doing the PPC, the page dropped and it never went back to number one. Uh, it, never, it never even went back to, to the first page. Um, and that was, you know, my first um real test on if uh PPC and SEO are sending signals to each other and it, it was an indication to me that they they certainly are um so uh, and I've seen people who've I think it was Mike right Mike and Brad and uh Jordan they were talking about uh when you publish a new page 
pay to get some traffic going to it. And I think Craig talked about this too, Craig Campbell. Um, pay to get some traffic to it while it's still running in the index. And ergo, because you have traffic to it, it is there I, is like considered more valuable. <sighs> I don't know if I buy off on that. Um, but I could see that it'd be indexed more if I'm sending more clicks to it. I, it's, I don't know. That's, I, I think we would really have to test that, right? Let's see, Kevin, do you build blog pages that point to your service pages to increase those rankings? Yeah. Um, but in my case, if you look at SEO this week, um, let me show you. Look at SEO this week. I'm actually using this um, for internal links. So SEO company, um, in order to capture some of, the, of that traffic, possibly um, in a local area. So here in Yuma, for example, SEO company, there you go. The page kind of kicked in just doing that relevancy, right? So I'm not intentionally trying, uh, like I got the title tags at the SEO company, but um, ultimately what would be cool is getting digital ranking for SEO company. I had uh, over the top SEO in the top 10 for SEO company. I think the highest I got it was number five nationally for the term SEO company. Um, so I'm kind of just playing around with that and using the blog post to do that. I could run this to some of the other pages like the Phoenix and all that other stuff, but I, I'm trying a little bit to kind of keep this separate from um, the sales aspect of the agency, right? So I want to have people that are looking specifically with the user intent of finding an agency versus a um, informational post, which is what SEO this week would be or how to, you know, whatever. It would all be informational intent. So I'm kind of keeping those separately. Uh, let's see, that would be a hard one to test. Yeah, I think it would, because you, if you want to test only the traffic from paid ads um, and eliminate every other possible variable, then what you end up with is sending paid ads to a single variable test. And I doubt you'd even get approved for that. Um, and then if you, and if you do it on a, like if I did it on this page here, how do we know that the paid ads is um, uh, what did it versus the link from YouTube versus the embed from YouTube versus the H1s, 2s, and 3s that I have set up uh, versus the internal linking to the page. You know what I mean? So it's it's that's hard to, to separate that and the, to put that into one thing. Um, my gut tells me that it probably helps with indexing more than it helps with ranking. Um, and then the CTR from Google actually helps with ranking more uh, than it would from a paid ad, to traffic from the paid ad. So um, it's kind of a, yeah, it's, that's a, that's a real hard one, Britt. I, I, I don't want to say it doesn't work because I haven't tested it um, definitively, but I, I don't see beyond helping with the indexing and keeping it to stick what value that would be. Um, I don't know. Maybe Mike and Brad, I'll hit them up and ask them if they're doing it. I know Jordan's doing it. Jordan was doing it to um, GMBs. Um, and Alex, I'm not sure if Alex, that's Jordan's new partner, but I'm not sure if Alex is doing it. But I know Jordan was doing it. He was doing it to GMBs. But GMBs, even for Jordan, they're pissing him off. And he stopped doing a whole lot of stuff because of the, the changes and and uh, mass bans and all that stuff. And so I don't even know if he's doing traffic to GMBs anymore. But I know he used to. Um, I've used tools to GMBs and I've fried so many maps using tools. It's not even funny. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, let's see. You guys got anyone else? Any other questions? I rambled on here for a while. Yeah, Brit Skeptical is going to test. Yeah, I'd say test it, Brit. Figure it out. See if it works. 
And then define what works is. Um, that would be a good one too. Like if you're running traffic, is it improving your indexing? Um, or is it improving your short-term rankings? Or does it improve your long-term rankings? And the, the difference is when you turn off the ad, does your ranking drop? Uh, or does it stick because now you have CTR? Um, that would be a good one to test. And I would probably test uh, yeah, that in a couple of ways. One is pay the ads, get it going, see if it, it, it ranks. And if it ranks, then just cut off the ads completely, right? And see what happens to it. Does it fall out of the, the, the top of its rankings? And then the second page I would do is drop the ad level, the ad spend down progressively until it's at zero and see if the ranking from the ad stays, assuming you get ranking from the traffic. Uh, because your page will be there longer and it has better CTR, maybe it sticks. That would be another that would be another good thing to test. I would try that out too. Okay, let's see. Do we got anything else? <clears throat> I'm gonna scroll up, make sure I didn't miss anybody. All is good. Locations covered that. Got Nathan's, got Brits and his dog. Uh, all right, looks like we're good. Okay. So hopefully next week I'll plan better. Yeah, stepping down and spend is good. Yeah, I, I think I would try that one for sure. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's it. So this has been uh, episode 183. Thank you guys and gals for watching. You on Facebook and YouTubes and the, and the Periscopes. I uh, appreciate all of y'all. If you're on the YouTubes, if you could, give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Engagement is engagement. Be sure to subscribe and click the little bell so you can get notified uh, when I um, when I go live. And if you're on the, the book face, uh, hit a like so you, you get to see all my, the rest of my stuff for the rest of the week. <laughs> Let's see. Um, mm hmm hmm just to call confirm when creating a location page if you have more than one service just create the location page off of the main money maker now on the location page list all of your services and then link out to each one of those service pages so if you're a roofer then you link out to the roofer page from your location page if you also do kitchen remodeling List that you also do kitchen remodeling on your location page and then link out to your kitchen remodeling page. Uh, hopefully that clears it up. All right. Perfect. One hour. Appreciate you guys and gals again, and I'll see you all next week.